Okay, what we're going to talk about this time is arrow logic or cause and effect relationships when frequency or inductance changes in a parallel RL circuit. So first let's talk about if frequency changes. So first off, let's say frequency goes down. The first thing to remember when we're talking about changing frequency. So if we're changing frequency one way or the other, either it's going up or it's going down, it's only affecting your inductor, right? Because resistance is not changed by frequency. There's no way for frequency to change resistance. And it's not a component that is affected by changes in frequency. However, your inductor is a component that is affected by frequency. We know that as frequency goes up, we see a greater change in current, and as we see a greater change in current, we see a greater inductive reactance, right? A bigger magnetic field, more lines of flux. So, in this case, when frequency goes down, we see a smaller change in your current. And because you see a smaller change in your current or less change in your current, then your frequency goes down and your ohmic value goes down. Now, doing it by the math, I put the formula right here for you. XL is equal to 2 pi times frequency times inductance for a reason. So if you think about this, XL is a straight multiplication formula. If frequency goes down, or if one of the numbers in your multiplication formula goes down, then your result must also go down. That's simple mathematical principles. You put a smaller number in, you get a smaller number out. So if frequency goes down, my inductive reactance goes down. Now we know that in parallel circuits, parallel circuits are current dividers. So we're interested in what's happening with current because we know that in a pure parallel like this, voltage is constant to all three branches. So voltage will be the same everywhere, no matter what's happening with those ohmic values. So we're looking at current and we're going to look at a couple different things in relation to current. We're looking at what's happening to total current, we're looking what's happening to current through the individual branches. So let's talk first about what's happening with current in the individual branches because once we understand what's happening with current in the individual branches, we can determine what's happening with total current. You'll notice too in this example that there are no numbers and that is because we're talking theory. We're trying to get you thinking beyond the math. The math proves the theory but we want you to be able to look at the circuits and visualize the theory that the math supports. So, once again, frequency goes down, inductive reactance we know goes down, straight multiplication formula. Put a smaller number in, you get a smaller number out. Now, if inductive reactance goes down, then we know that these ohmic values, right, are going down. Ohmic values are going down in those two branches. But we also know that frequency does not affect my resistor, which means resistance is staying the same. Now, we know that voltage is the same for all three branches. So if voltage is the same, the only variable to figuring current, because current is voltage divided by the ohmic value of the branch, the only variable is the ohmic value in the branch. So we look here at resistance, and we know that voltage divided by resistance. We know that voltage is staying the same, and resistance is staying the same. So if I have two numbers that are staying the same, then I know that the current through my resistor is staying the same. Now, we look here at our two inductive branches, we see that the ohmic value in both of those are going down we know that voltage is staying the same. But the ohmic values, right, are going down. Now, if you have an ohmic value that is going down, right, then you know that resistance and current are opposite each other. So if resistance is going down, current must be going up. So the current in both of these branches are going up. 
Now, we can figure out total current. You look at total current and you have one current that stays the same, one current that goes up, and another current that goes up. So if I have one branch that stays the same and two branches that have current that goes up, then it makes sense that total current is going up. And that is how we do arrow logic in an RL parallel circuit.